Hello, I'm Fahmida Afrin, and today I'll be presenting on disparities in cancer care. I'm recording this presentation on July 17, 2022. Before we delve into the presentation, a little bit about myself. I am a senior and I study in DPS STS school in Dhaka, Bangladesh, and I'm involved with the STEM club of my high school. I've worked as a content writer at a student organization called Cancer Together Dhaka, and I'm also into debating. So what's health disparity? As per the definition given by Healthy People 2020 program in the United States, health disparity is a particular type of health difference that is closely linked with social, economic, and environmental disadvantage. So what does disparity in cancer care around the world look like? So in 2012, there were 14.1 million new cancer cases and 57% of these cases were in low-income countries. There were 8.2 million cancer deaths and 65% of these deaths were in these countries. So these low-income countries are the ones which have less resources and treatment opportunities than the high-income countries do and hence these countries um, face a huge burden of cancer prevalence as well as cancer mortality. So let's compare the USA and Kenya in terms of their cancer care services. So the USA uh, spends 17% of its GDP on healthcare. It has had a national population-based cancer registry, which contains data about um, cancer prevalence, mortality, common cancer types and causes, and so on. So also vaccines, for example, the human papilloma virus or HPV vaccine and hepatitis B vaccines are much more widely available in the US and also much emphasized on in the national immunization programs. And having adequate funding, the USA also has sufficient physicians, drugs and equipment and screening facilities for its citizens. And all of this is reflected in the health outcomes. Uh, for example, the cancer, cervical cancer mortality rate is 2.7 for 100,000 people every year in the US, whereas it's far higher. Um, it's 21.8 in Kenya. Um, because, for example, Kenya spends much low of its much lower share of its GDP on healthcare, only 4.7%. It doesn't have um, a database like the US does about cancer prevalence and so on. Um, vaccines like HPV and hepatitis B are not included in Kenya's national immunization programs and there is a scarcity of well-trained physicians, essential drugs and equipment needed for cancer treatment and screening. Now I'll be shedding light on the situation of cancer care in Bangladesh and the underlying challenges that are present here. So according to the International Agency for Research on Cancer or IARC, in 2020, Bangladesh saw 156,775 new cancer cases and 108,990 deaths from cancer. However, um, this data is not um, the, the actual data because actual data in Bangladesh about cancer uh, prevalence or mortality is very hard to get because Bangladesh does not have its own population-based cancer registry or PBCR for its citizens. The data that's available, that's only an estimate of um, cancer prevalence and types in the neighboring countries. So a big problem in Bangladesh is the problem with the lack of awareness. So most of the population of Bangladesh is rural and the awareness or basic knowledge about cancer is nearly absent um, in the rural population. For example, people are not properly um, aware of the early signs and symptoms of cancer or about the self-screening procedures uh, of cancer. And also there are stigmas surrounding, um, there are very, various cultural stigmas. And so often women are very hesitant to open up about um, breast cancers or cervical cancers, um, even to their family members, let alone physicians. And, also, Bangladesh does not have a conclusive national um, cancer screening system and national cancer control strategies and treatment protocols at the national level. So what happens is most patients visit a, doc visit a doctor when the cancer has already advanced a lot. And as such, the chances of prognosis are very, is, are very low um, and the treatment becomes much more expensive, but less effective. The second problem that is present in Bangladesh is the treatment cost and the financial divide among the people from different sorts of backgrounds. So the hospitals in Bangladesh can be divided into two broad categories. First, there are the government hospitals and then there are the private hospitals. So the government hospitals, they have 
good physicians um, and they provide treatment at a very low and reasonable cost. So they are the main resort for the low income families of Bangladesh who constitute the majority of our population. And hence, the problem is that these government hospitals are always overwhelmed with patients. Like patients are always outnumbering the available staff or hospital beds or other equipment and um, patients have to wait long hours as we can see in this image um, or often patients have to receive treatment lying on the corridors or even stairways of the hospitals. On the other hand are the private hospitals. So these hospitals do have good doctors and maintenance but um, the problem is that these hospitals are way too expensive and far beyond the reach of the general population of the country. So only a rich bubble is able to access healthcare in these hospitals. The other problem is that the cancer care facilities in Bangladesh are largely centralized towards the capital, Dhaka, which is here in orange in this map. So um, out of the 14 medical colleges in Bangladesh that have oncology units, five of them are in Dhaka alone, and the rest nine are spread in different parts of um, the remaining country. So like out of the almost like around 165 million people of Bangladesh, 22 million people live in Dhaka and the remaining people um, in other parts of the country. So here is some data on the health system capacity of Bangladesh. So we can see that, for example, the number of CT scanners um, per 10,000 cancer patients is only 12.1 um, MRI scanners, 4.6 PET CT scanners, 0.3. So now I'll, I'd like to highlight a few instances in my family. I've had two relatives who um, have fought cancer. So my grandfather passed away this year. Um, he had cancer, and but the problem was that his doctors failed to um, diagnose his cancer when it was still in its early stages and it got diagnosed years after its onset. So by that time, uh, the treatment, the chances of recovery were also lower and also he got COVID and that further relayed um, the starting of his treatment. Um, my maternal aunt has been fighting cancer for over a decade now and both of them lived in this southern district of uh, southern division of Kulna um, in Bangladesh which is like highlighted in pink here. So the problem is that Kulna doesn't have specialized cancer hospitals which have like uh, with proper um, treatment options for its patients. And um, whenever my aunt, for example, has had to receive treatment or consult her physician, she has had to make this eight to 10 hour long journey to Dhaka, which is uh, pretty much of a hassle for patients. And you know, these are just two stories of my family members, but there are millions of such stories where um, people have had problems accessing cancer treatment because of the places where they live in, um, because these places did not have proper um, treatment facilities. Also, for example, in the case of my aunt, her appointments and tests got delayed a lot because of the pandemic, because of the restrictions on travel and uh, the risks of getting COVID. And problems like this always cause the cancer to aggravate further um, and treatment to get delayed, which um, is like which poses a big harm on the recovery and health outcomes. So since uh, so far as we have seen in my presentation, the two major problems in Bangladesh at present about cancer health are the problem of uh, lack of awareness and various myths and stigmas surrounding cancer and the financial divide among the people of different socioeconomic backgrounds. So I have worked with this organization called Cancer Together Dhaka. We have um, used our social media to spread awareness about different aspects of cancer. Um, and we have also conducted some fundraiser events uh, for various patients who have ha uh, found the cost of their treatment burdensome and have reached out to us. So cancer is a disease or that doesn't discriminate among people of different backgrounds or different financial um, abilities, right? But their access to treatment 
is like a lot dependent on where they come from and what are their financial capacities, but that should not be the case. Um, so since there is this problem, there are also solutions um, for it at government and institutional levels. I think more can be done to fund the initiatives that are needed in order to make cancer screenings and treatment much more accessible to people from all geographical regions, from all backgrounds. And there should also be an inclusive database in the country for cancer records. Um, as individuals and corporations, uh, you can donate to different nonprofit organizations, hospitals, or individuals who are helping patients to afford, afford their cancer treatment. Now, something that every one of us can do from our respective positions is that we can spread awareness about the disease. We can work um, to debunk myths and stigma surrounding the disease with our um, education and knowledge. So more people can know about what to do when they see early signs and symptoms, where to go to seek treatment and so on, while the disease is still in its early stage. So here are my sources and references that I've used in case you want to read up more on the issue that, that I just talked about, you can definitely look up these sources. Um, I'd like to thank my family, um, the Cancer Together Dhaka organization and the Global Health Leaders Conference at Johns Hopkins University for giving me this platform. And of course, I'd like to thank you, the audience, for um, listening to this presentation. So, if you would, if you have questions regarding my presentation, or if if there's anything you'd like to discuss, please feel free to reach out to me. Here is my email address and my Instagram handle, where you can find me and talk to me. So thank you so much. <laughs>